my situation around. God turn my situation around. If God can turn any situation around, that means my situation qualifies. Pinch your neighbor and say, I qualify for a turn around this evening. I qualify for a turn around this morning. There is nothing that the Lord cannot do. There is no situation that is too hard or impossible that God cannot do. If you are facing desperate circumstances this morning, if you've been scrolling, stop right now. Do not put a comma. Do not put a full stop. Just stop right here and take a chill pill and understand that God wants to download something very important in your ear tonight. I want to talk to those that are facing desperate situations. Desperate, desperate situations. God is saying that he has sent help for you. The help that you require to turn things around. Oh, somebody, can you shout one more time? My situation is being turned around. God is turning around my situation. God is sending you help to turn your situation around in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Thank you, Lord. Ah, Lord God. Behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and your outstretched arm. There is nothing too hard for you, says the prophet Jeremiah. You have turned things around. There is nothing too hard for you, my God. You have limitless power. You have limitless ability, oh God. Whatever you think that is impossible, my God, I want to tell you that it is possible with God. He is limitless in power. He is limitless in ability. This is the God that you came this morning to serve. This is the God this morning that you came to pray to. Come on, somebody. I need your confidence to be unshaken. I need your faith to be unshaken. I need you to know that God knows that he knows that you know that you think that he knows. The things that you think that he doesn't know, he actually knows. Somebody shout and pinch your neighbor and go, hashtag he knows. He knows my situation. He knows my circumstances. Talk to me. Whatever the, I thought was impossible, I, whatever I'm thinking, it is not an impossibility for him. He's a God of impossibilities. He's a God that knows that there is no sickness that is too great. There is no sickness that is too great. There is no problem that is too big for him. Talk to me, somebody. There is nothing that can overwhelm God. I may be feeling overwhelmed, but God is not overwhelmed. There is no overwhelming situation that God cannot overcome. Talk to me, somebody. He is the almighty God, and he is the God that has all power. His power is his, and he, is, he will use it at will. I want to encourage somebody this morning and tell them that God still does miracles today. I want to encourage somebody this morning and to understand that there is a power that is operating above the power of which is above the power of wizards. The power that is able to turn your situation around. Somebody shout one more time and say my situation is turning around. I'm looking for believers who are saying I am ready to shake this thing. I am ready to pray through this thing. I am ready to turn things around. I'm ready to turn things around because I've got a God of a turnaround, a God who makes things shake. I'm here for a God that will raise for your, your confidence and show you that he's able to do in your life and show you that he's able to get the power to work for you. Power does not just work for the rich. Power does not work for the people that stay in some rich suburb. No, 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 baby girl. It works for you. I don't care whether you recharge ESCOM, you recharge NEPA, you recharge whoever is the authority. There is power that is being released today. Talk to me, somebody. God has given us that power. And we need to let, learn how to get it out, how to get it active. Oh, somebody pray and say, Lord, activate the power inside of me. Lord, activate the power inside of me. The power must be active. I'm plugged in. I am having high voltage. What will you do with the voltage that is inside of you? Some of you have so much power. You haven't realized that you need to release this power. Some of you are taking this power just for, for, for granted. You don't understand what you carry. And that is why you are feeling so frustrated. You are feeling like doors are closing. No, it's because you're not using the power. It's overwhelming the system. It's, it, it's basically like when you keep on eating, you keep on eating and you sit in a position where you are so full and nothing is digesting. That power is sent for you to activate and to, to, to work it out. Talk to me, somebody. 
How does that power start, Pastor Fortune? It starts with surrounding yourself with the word of God. What are you doing here? You have surrounded yourself with the word of God. It starts by you having a powerful, ignited, on fire, on, on fire, on ste- a prayer life that is on steroids, a protocol breaking prayer life. Building your faith from uh, from the word of God. And that is how you turn impossibilities. That is how you turn impossible situations around. So I'm here to talk to you who's listening to the sound of my voice on TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube. That God is saying if you are facing the impossible, if you are facing battles that seemingly impossible, you need to turn to God right now because God says, I can turn it around. Please pinch your neighbor one more time in case they didn't catch it and say, God can turn that thing around. I don't know why you're messing with that thing, but God can turn it around. Sometimes we need to understand when to be superman and superwoman. But there's times when we need to turn things over to God so that God can turn it around. God, turn this thing around. God can show you how to beat giants. If he showed and showed and gave the formula to David on how to beat Goliath, who is this Goliath that is standing before you and your God? Who is this Goliath that is standing before you and your breakthrough? God can turn it around. Talk to me. Somebody needs to know you can depend on God. Oh, please help me pray this thing and say, I can depend on God. This morning I rose to tell the devil, I can depend on God. I rose when I woke up this morning at midnight. I put my feet on the ground. I did not wear any shoes that nobody manufactured. I'm seated on the ground. I'm stepping on this ground, this earth that was created by God to announce, the devil is a liar. The lion is awake. I am a descendant of a lion. I hail from the lion of Judah. I hail with the roar. I have come with the roar to tell the devil, God has turned it around. Oh Jesus. God will fight for you. David was able to beat the giant and win the battle with the help of God. Somebody shout, God help me. Don't be so proud. Don't be so braggadocious. Don't be so pompous to think that asking for help is a rock. God help me. I'm here because I need your help. I know I can't do it on my own. David knew how to get God involved in any impossible situation. This giant, he seems so big. They may look like they have more money. I hear the Holy Spirit says, I must tell you that there's a battle that you are fighting in your workplace. And you are, you have been saying they've got all the money to go, to take you to the labor courts and everything, but you don't know how to fight this thing, but you are in the right. I'm telling you, there's a God. There's a God. God says that don't look at the giantness of the corporation that you're fighting, but God can turn it around. Talk to me. What helped David? What helped David win? He understood he couldn't do it without the help of God. He couldn't do it by listening to people who are telling him he's useless. He he couldn't help uh, help himself. He couldn't imagine if he had to focus on people who were telling him how horrible he is and how, how many sins he had committed. No, baby girl, I don't care how many sins I've committed. I don't know how much of my file you've got, but all I know is that God helps me. God pulls through for me. God can help me. Talk to me. There are principles that I can just follow in the Bible and I know God will show up for me. Whether it's a small battle, big battle, God can help me. I'm here to announce. Let me prophesy to somebody who's ready to receive this word. Father, whatever is needed to turn this situation around, I know that you are releasing it right now in Jesus' mighty name. Hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. He's saying, I am turning financial situations around this morning. He says, I am turning health problems around this morning. I am turning around every life-threatening disease this morning. Anything that has been called life threatening. I don't know what they are threatening because it is God that gave the life to start with. I am saying, I prophesy, there shall be a turnaround in your family. There shall be a turnaround in your marriage. There shall be a turnaround in any relationship difficulty that you have been facing. I prophesy a turnaround in any court proceedings and legal battles that are happening around you. I prophesy that there shall be a turnaround, that repossession by the bank of your house. It is being turned around. You will not lose your home in Jesus' something. 
something else. God says, I have ordered a turnaround and heaven has come for that turnaround in Jesus' mighty name. Whatever the challenge that you are facing, God is bigger. If you are crying out, God help me, you are the candidate. Somebody shout in the comment section one more time. God help me. God help me. When you know that God is your helper, you have no, no problem shouting, God help me. God help me. I know there are times when we don't want to ask help from our enemies and we don't want them to think that we are weakling. But this morning, I'm here to tell you, I'm saying, shout it out. God help me. I don't understand this mess that is going around in my family. I don't understand why this thing seems like a repeated pattern of failure. But God help me. I can't do it. Ah, I need you to move because this situation is very desperate in my, in my life, my God. Hallelujah. You need to understand, child of God, that there were people in the Bible that faced desperate situations, but they came out of them with the help of God. Oh, pinch your neighbor one more time and says, with the help of God, I can do it. With the help of God, I can do it. With the help of God, I can do it. You came out of a sticky situation. Somebody had a car accident. You know that you were drunk, and but you came out some, one way or the other. Why? God was giving you a second chance. That person is right here, by the way. Don't think I'm just making an example. You know that God saved you, not because it was the other side's fault. It was your fault. But God helped you. Jesus helped me. If you're asking the question, will God help me? Will God turn it around? This is your answer. This is the night of God will help me. God will turn it around. This is the night of God will help me. God will turn it around. God wants to help you, child of God. Some people need the help of God and they don't know if he will do it or if he will do anything because they're saying, my life is so messed up. My sin life, I, I have not been living a righteous life. I don't even know. I don't know. Some saying, I don't know if it is the will of God to help me because I've been praying this prayer point for three years and I don't know, Pastor Fortune. I don't even know whether I'm just, I'm just winging it. I'm just swinging it just in case he, just in case in this prayer meeting, he's going to show up. God, I know it is your will to help me. So wherever I'm messing up, let your mercy speak. Show me the right direction so that I come back, so, so that I can understand how to expedite this help that I require. Child of God, I came to confirm, I brought a word just to tell you that God wants to turn your situation around. God wants to help you. The question is, how can I get God's help? What did I say the question is? I said, how can I get the help of God? Let the question be, how can I get God's help? It's not whether he wants to help me. Yes, he wants to help me. How can I get the help of God? That is a wise question. You know, when you are a student and you are in class, you must ask relevant questions. Don't ask questions just to make conversation. Don't ask questions that are useless. It's like when you are dating somebody and you are in a relationship, ask questions that are irrelevant. Irre don't ask irrelevant questions that don't help you build up a profile of this person you want to be waking up to every single day of your life. Forever is a long time to be waking up to a person who does not have a medulla bronchitis that is making sense. Ask the right questions. What are you? Who are you? Why are you here? What do you bring to my life? Where, how are you going to improve my life? How do you fit in in my destiny? Can't be discussing about how cute you are. Cute, cute does not build destiny. Jesus, how can I get God's help in this issue? Because clearly I've missed it. I've been going to church for so many years. I don't know. I've missed it. Could it be that you are too reliant on other people doing for you and you didn't want to do? Could it be that you needed to get deeper in the word? Ah, protocol breaking prayers. If you are seeing me for the first time today, this is not the platform where you are going to be gimme, 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 gimme Christians. You're going to do it. You're going to do it for yourself. As much as we can pray, we can intercede, we can stand in the gap and God can give you the breakthrough. The rest, baby girl, you are going to have to take the steering wheel. You're going to have to steer this thing because we don't take lazy here. We don't do lazy. You're going to have to learn the word of God for yourself and you're going to have to apply it. Come on, somebody.
How can I get God's help? How can I God to turn this situation around so that my faith can be built up? How can I use the word of God? How can I go deeper and get the revelation from the word of God to do what I need to do? How do I need to understand this thing so that God, my faith must respond to the word? My faith is built up from the word of God. Talk to me, somebody. Somebody shout one more time. God, help me. There are many who need the, the help of God and desperately cry out for him to turn things around. And, and, and they will definitely get it. And once you get it, use it well. But child of God, let me, let me, let me but just, just offer him here. It's not enough to cry out to God. Oh, Jesus. If, if your cries were enough, we would see God moving in every circumstance. I often see people who come and accuse, yeah, you people say we must love God. Yeah, you people are saying, God, this, 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 that. But look at how many, many people are suffering. Many cried even in the scriptures. But the Bible showed me something. It was those that believed. You can cry and not believe. Crying must be coupled with your belief. They cried, but when they came to Jesus, he wanted to know, do you believe? It's not son of man, can you help me? Do you believe I can help you? If you don't believe, I can help you. Sweetheart, even doctors know they can give you placebos versus the real medication. And people have been healed on taking placebos. They did not know they were taking placebos. Your belief, this thing is in your belief. It's not that we profess to be doctors and, and, and specialists. This thing we can't explain. It's a supernatural thing. Signs and wonders shall follow them. Those that believe. So if we prophesy healing, if we speak healing into your body, we don't know. It is the maker that does it. There is no magic to this thing. And it's linked to your belief. If you don't believe it, it ain't going to work for you. If you don't believe it, you're going to call it fake. But anyway, I'm not there. Let's continue to pray. God, turn my situation around. There are many that came to Jesus and they faced desperate situation. They faced impossible challenges. They were right at the end of all hope in their lives when they came to Jesus and they walked away having the freedom that they came to demand from our master Jesus. Jesus turned things around for them. Jesus can turn things around for you. If Jesus did it for them, God can do it for you as well. Come on somebody. You need to just believe in him. Hallelujah. Impossible situations are exactly the candidate and the and, and the documentary that God is, is calling you for. God is calling you to be part of this movie where he helps you. Talk to me, somebody. The nobleman's son was at the point of death. And in the book of John chapter 4, verse 47, the Bible says, when he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and implored him to come down and heal his son for he was at the point of death. I don't want you to wait until things are at the point of death. Don't wait so long. But anyway, in case you are the last minute one who waited until you are at the point of death, come on somebody. The Bible, when I track with it, tells me that the centurion servant was sick and was ready to die but God somebody shout but God talk to me the Bible says in Luke chapter 7 verse 2 and a certain centurion servant who was dear to him was sick and ready to die I'm here to tell somebody it's not time to check out yet I know some people have been saying I am sick let me go I'm ready to die I'm sick I'm seeing the other side is calling me I'm sick and I'm ready to die go oh, come on with me talk to me and let's check together and I see a, a man called Jarius and I'm told that Jarius' daughter was at the point of death. In fact, she died before Jesus arrived. But Jesus, when he arrived on the scene, he raised her from the dead. Talk to me. Nothing is beyond the power of God. Death is not beyond the power of God. God is beyond the power of death. Talk to me. Oh, in Mark chapter 5 verse 33, the Bible says he begged him earnestly saying, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands upon her so that she may be healed and she will 
live. Talk to me, somebody. There is something about even people who have money. When they come to that point, when they realize that no doctor, no specialist, no, no, I don't know what they call them. I don't know scientists, whatever it is. When they come to the end of themselves and everybody just turns to God, they may walk around as if God is a nobody. They may walk around that Christianity don't matter. My sweetheart, at the end of the day, they're always called the pastor. They always call whether it you will joke. You, they, they can joke around and be atheists all they want, but there is a point where you need God, and you will suddenly be looking for His servants, and you will say, "I need God," because really these doctors have failed. I spent all the medical insurance that I could have. At the darkest hour of this man's life, when he was about to lose his daughter, and he received that the only daughter that he had was about to die, Jesus encouraged him to believe. Oh, somebody shout, I believe. Somebody shout, I believe. I believe. Are we checking together TikTok? I want to see you. I believe. I believe. Only someone who knows things are not over could encourage you like that. Jesus did not shake. Man of God, woman of God, don't shake. Are you believing yourself? When you speak, speak with audacity. I don't care whether the symptoms remain and they say, I went to church, I was on a wheelchair, I came back, I'm still on a wheelchair. Do you believe? Sometimes even us as men and women of God, we need to shake ourselves off from disbelief the belief is the equation is it an equation come on mathematicians teach me this thing it is the formula that is required to get to the equal what what do you believe and at times child of god it don't matter whether your pastor believes it or your pastor doesn't believe it if you have spoken it father i connect the anointing must bring this to pass i believe and if i believe it must manifest this thing is about your belief. It's not about how your pastor feels at that point when they are praying for you. Do you believe? Go. Oh, most people would have sympathized with the loss of Jarius' daughter. Most people would have tried to comfort him. But Jesus knew it was not over. Can somebody type and take somebody and say it's not over? It is not over. Take your neighbor and tell them it is not over. It is not over. It is not over, Facebook. It is not over, YouTube. It is not over. Faith had already been released when the men declared. When you go to that scripture in verse 23, when the men declared, come and lay your hands on her. It don't matter the diagnosis. It don't matter the death certificate the doctor had written. Come and lay your hands on her. That was the point where that man, he had released his faith. As far as he's concerned, he was not ready to listen to the gynecologist, to the neurologist. He was not ready to listen to the physician and anybody else. Faith had been released. My faith is, re it is not over. All I know, it's not over. Everybody, that is why Paul said, take out the noise makers people who are making noise exit from this room i don't want to hear it it's not over and listen whether it is a business project whatever it is you are trusting god for if god did not say it's over my dear you hold on to it there's a point where you listen to counsel where you know that you need to change strategy but if it's not over it's not over Sometimes it may take a while for you to know it's over. But if God has, you have heard it clearly and God says it's not over, you ride that thing. It is not over. God bless you, Jane. It is not over. If your faith has been released, you stand on that thing. Nobody must try and discourage you. Come and lay hands on her that she may be healed. These ones, these ones have wasted my time. Psychologists have wasted my time. It's not over. Because the man believed. Because of that belief, he, he received a miracle. Oh, I check with the word of God. Are you guys tired of checking with me? You know when I come on, I come on with scripture and I'm going to take you through this thing. Let's go. Let's check. I see a woman with the issue of blood. I see a woman who had spent all the money she had spent. I see a woman who had tried every kind of medical field. The Bible says in the book of Mark chapter 5 verse 25 to 26. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. For 12 years. For 12 years. And had suffered 
Who is fibroid? Who created cysts? Who cre- Why if guys, if these things were in the Bible for so many years, why do you panic? Why do you stress? If God could open up a womb of an old woman over 90 years, why do you stress? Why panic mechanic mode because of some mother-in-law who's jumpy, jumpy and talking, talking? It's not over. The woman with the issue of blood had been to many physicians, the Bible tells us. She had spent all the money she had and was no better, nothing. They discouraged you. They told you even your pastor cannot fix this thing if the biggest specialist in town cannot do it. Aya. But the condition was getting worse and worse. Who am I talking to this morning? That person who sees their condition getting worse and worse. So I checked the scriptures and I saw that there were people who spent many years in problems and without help. The woman with the issue of blood was there. Until, but God. I saw a woman with a, with a spirit of infirmity in the book of Luke chapter 13, but God. I saw a man who was born blind in the book of John chapter 9, but God. I checked with the scriptures. I met a man at the gate of called beautiful who was crippled for 38 years, but God. I saw a man begging for arms at the gate of called beautiful who thought he needed money, but he needed something else that but God. So despite many years of illnesses, Jesus had the audacity to set all of them free. Jesus turned around their situation for them. And if Jesus could turn around their situation, but God can turn around your situation. What can we learn from these things, these examples that I've brought for you this morning? That there is nothing that is past God being able to help you. There is nothing that like it has gone too far. It's too far. This matter is too late. It's too far. It's too far gone. No, it's not too far God. It's not over. It's not over. It's not over. When God is in it, it's not over. Jesus. Oh, let me not get into worship now. I need to teach this thing so that we can pray some more. When Lazarus was dead and in his tomb, Jesus came on the scene and said, take away the stone. Aya. Somebody please help me take your neighbor and tell them, take away the stone. Take away the the hindrance. Take away the blockage. Take away the key that is refusing to unlock. Because I've got a master key this morning. Take away the door. If the door will not open, take down the door. If they don't want to open the gate, take down the wall and the fence. Take away the stone. What was Jesus saying? Jesus was declaring, I'm not through here yet. Take away the stone. Hey, uh, the word of God sometimes just gets me all. Oh, so when Jesus was telling them, take away the stone. Don't tell me the man is smelling. Don't tell me he's been dead. It's been four days. Uh, take away the stone. I'm not done yet. Jesus has sent me this morning to tell you he's not done yet. I don't know whether you feel like giving up. He's not done yet. So if he's not done yet, you better get that bioplast in the system. You gotta get bioplast, Jesus. You better, I don't know whether you wanna put energy drink, Jesus. God is not done yet. He says, I'm not done yet. Who told you to close that chapter? I'm not done yet. Who told you to stop working on your CV? I'm not done yet. Who told you to stop working on your proposals? He's not done yet. When Lazarus was dead and in his tomb, he came on the scene and he said, I am declaring, I am not through yet. And what happened? But God. But God, he raised Lazarus from the dead. And often when we face challenges in life, we roll the stone of hopelessness before us and despair in front of the situation. We give up all hope and and, and, and we don't think that things will change. This morning, I'm here to tell you, move that stone out of the way. 
Jesus says, I can still do something. Move that stone out of the way. I can still do something. Move that stone out of the way. I can still do something. Move that stone out of the way. I can still do something. Panda, move that stone out of the way. He can still do something. Talk, um, talk to me, somebody. Uh, prophetess, dear Davis, move that stone. God can stu- still do something. Move that stone. Move that stone. Move that stone. Move that stone, Siwe. Move that stone. I can still do something. Do not give up on hope. Do not think that there's nothing that cannot be done. God can change anything. God can change change and turn every situation around. Even when the doctors have given up on you. Even when the doctors have given up all hope and say there's nothing they can do. Even when the doctors say take them out of the ICU and take them into a home and just wait for death. God is saying move that stone. I can still do something. There is nothing they can do but there's something that I can do. Talk to me. Talk to me. Help me pinch your neighbor and tell them Jesus still can do it. Jesus still can do it. Jesus still can do it. Jesus can still do what is needed. He can do what is needed. They don't know what is needed. It, 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 it comes to the end of their mentality or their knowledge or whatever they studied. It's not in the books that they studied but Jesus knows what is needed. Jesus knows what is necessary. He says when you put your faith in him I can turn it around. When you put your faith in him I can turn it around. Put your faith on Jesus. Can you help me slap your neighbor one more time and tell them put your faith in Jesus. Don't put your faith in men. Put your faith in Jesus. Don't put your faith in me. Don't put your faith on Pastor Fortune. I may fall asleep sweetheart. Put your faith in Jesus. Put your faith in Jesus. See where God gave you that baby. Put your faith in Jesus and that is the protection you need and that is the full stop. And I'm telling you, see where you will not panic during your pregnancy in Jesus' mighty name. You will not be running helter skelter nervous and sometimes you know sometimes of this some of the prayer points that are prayed for it's like you are wondering do i have a god my god jesus when challenges come and we get desperate and we get desperate it's not our desperation that gets god to move for us it is our faith understand tell your neighbor all that hunky and crying all over your faith he's waiting when you finish crying you will wipe your tears and you will wait for your faith have that ugly cry cry out god why have you done this god why are you forsaking me when you finish crying please don't cry for more than three days or two days even one day is too long finish crying and put your faith in god god is not moved by those da 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 Mm-mm. come on somebody I check the scriptures and I see that the man that the Bible talks about in the book of John chapter 4 was focused on his challenges. Jesus talks to him about believing. He he talks to him and, and, and redirects his conversation. The conversation is, do you believe? Don't answer questions as if you are about to fail an interview. You are sitting on the panel of, of Jesus, the Holy Ghost and God. He's asking you a question. Do you believe? Do you believe? That is the question. The question is not, do you work well under pressure? Is do you believe? The question is not whether or not can you do the job. Do you believe? The father of the guy, of the boy who had epilepsy in the book of Mark chapter 9, cried out to Jesus in desperation. Jesus coached him to believe. Oh, Jesus was a master coach. All my coaches, you need to coach like Jesus and you will see things are different. When you go to a life coach or a business coach, they will keep on asking you questions because they keep on asking you questions. They want you to find your path to actually answering yourself to say, do you believe? This is not a psychologist moment where you are sitting on the couch and we are listening to you running on and on and you are just ranting and ranting and ranting and ranting. Do you believe? That is the bottom line. We want to get to the point where you believe. Are you finished crying? 
Do you understand that when he says he has left, he has left? And I'm talking about the people in relationships. When you finish crying, it's up to you whether you're going to cry for a month, you're going to cry for three months, you're going to cry for six months or a year or two years or three years. But you cannot be stuck over a divorce that happened 10 years ago. Really, we need to move on. Come on, somebody. I know that you might be thinking I'm being harsh, but there comes a point where you need to rise up, dust yourself and move on. We cannot be crying over things that happened 10 years ago. You can't be crying over somebody that left five years ago. Sweetheart, they may have left you with three children, five children, six children. If they've left, they've left. What do you want to do with a mess that left? Do you believe that God is able to do better? better than what you had? Do you believe that God is able to equip you? Single parent, that you are able to pull through this thing and raise those kids. No, Pastor Fortune is not advocating single life. I'm not saying that you must not pray for... The, you know, there's a mentality that your mental health is important. You cannot be stuck over somebody that broke over your heart 10 years ago. You can't judge everybody that broke your heart and now every single person is painted by the same brush. Talk to me, somebody. Do you believe? Am I communicating? Yes, Esther. Times, you just need to shake this thing off. If it didn't work, it didn't work. If they duped you, they duped you. You move on. You shake yourself. You must believe that God is able to help you do the same thing again, better even. Let, let me coach some people. Even those who are in business, if the thing didn't work, if they, you change the strategy, it didn't work. Ask yourself, is this, this blueprint, was it given by God? Was it blessed by God? If it wasn't blessed by God, we keep stopping. God, okay, show me, where did I miss it? Do I need to tweak it or do I need to dump it? And do I need to move on? Stop holding on. I know sometimes it's very difficult. And sometimes even as counselors, we just, if you're not ready to move on, we let you soak. The pain will be a little bit deeper. You just keep on going, keep on crying. Amen, Brooke, I love you, my darling. Keep crying. When you finish, you keep crying. You come back and we're ready to take you to the next level. When you finish crying, when you say, you know what, enough is enough. My mother taught me something. He says, you can never convince a woman who is still in love and who doesn't want to leave a, an abusive relationship. You can just do your best. But the decision ultimately comes from them when they're enough. And you can just pray that they don't decide that it's enough. When, Especially when you're in a, a violent or physically abusive relationship. Don't decide when it's too late and when you're gone. Don't decide when it's too late, when, when you have now got some disease that now kills you. Just remember there is life after the storm. There is life after the flood. I think Apostle was preaching that message a few weeks ago. There is life after the storm. Can you please help me take that? Some, hashtag somebody on the comment section. Just take somebody and tell them there is life after the flood. There is life after the flood. The flood cannot destroy you. There is life after the flood. And you need to know that you must be compost mentis. Your mind must be ready to move on. You must remember those children that you have, they need a functioning parent. Whether you are the woman or the man, they need a functioning parent. So that is why as Christians, we have a higher hope. We need to understand that we don't have time for breakdowns. We can't be breaking down for more than one day or two days three days okay fine i'll allow you a week but really you need to shake yourself off and understand there are parents that are relying on your mental health to be stable there are children who are relying on your mental health you need to rely on yourself your only comeback is to look after yourself and understand that no human being must break you down there is life after the flood there is life after the flood it might have been swept away but there is life after the flood talk to me somebody Every storm must end at some point. If we need to rebuild, we rebuild. If the roof flew off, we rebuild. Am I communicating? Am I helping somebody this morning? There is life after the flood. Two blind men cried out for mercy. Jesus asked them, do you believe? Jesus was not about essays. He doesn't want your, your stories and stories. Do you believe? Act like your belief live out your belief desperate circumstances make us cry out in desperation but faith in God is what causes him to move in the most impossible circumstances father help me to move help my unbelief 
Let me have faith. God, the presence is so much. Don't be a statistic. The world is full, is full of, of desperate people whose circumstances are not changing. But the Bible tells us that faith is the victory that overcomes the world and all things are possible to him who believe. Faith is the key to bringing change to desperate circumstances, allowing God's power to move in those circumstances. Am I communicating PBP? Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world even our faith no matter what you're facing put your faith and confidence in God who can turn that situation around believe God thank you Jesus somebody pray and declare it I believe God nothing is too hard nothing is too impossible for him he can turn it around he will turn it around he can turn around any situation and bring you out on top Thank you, Jesus. There is life after the flood. He can bring you out on top, giving you the victory. So child of God, I'm here this morning to tell you, do not be discouraged, but realize that there is a hope. Keep your eyes on God. There is a hope. Keep your eyes on the word of God. Put your trust in him and believe that he can turn things around for you. He can turn things around for you. There is a name that gives you that supernatural turn around. There is a belief that will turn your things around. Come on, somebody. Father, immortal, invisible God and only wise God, we worship you in appreciation of your goodness and kindness and unfailing love. You have shown us the token of your inner infinite mercy, my God. Lord, we say a big thank you to you this morning, my God, for your priceless grace that you have given us. You have provided for our needs in Jesus' mighty name. We praise you, Lord, for your sake. We praise you, ancient of days. We praise you because we know that you are the God that divides oceans for us, oh God. We praise you, King of kings. We praise you, Lord of lords. We exalt you and give you all the glory, my God. You are God of all impossibilities who can turn it around. Somebody shout it one more time. God can turn it around. God can turn it around. God can turn it around. Oh, Jesus. How am I doing for time? Are we still good? Are we still good? Mm -mm -mm. All things work together. There's a scripture in Romans 8 verse 28 that's just sprung up. All things, we know all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. To them who are called according to his purpose. Let me break this down. All things work to go for good for God, to them who love God. So you must love God. Check yourself. Do you love God? Do you love God? That, that is a sermon in itself. Let me not go there. Because sometimes we need to check ourselves. Do we really love God in the way we behave? Do we love God? Whatever you're going through, God is aware of it. No matter how rough, no matter how tough it might seemingly be, he's aware. And he sent me this morning to tell you he's going to bring you out unhurt. He's going to bring you out untouched. He's going to make sure that you are not hurt out of that situation. Praise the Lord who keeps our bones. Praise the Lord who keeps us. And make sure that our bones are not broken in righteousness. The enemy may throw challenges at you. He may fold, bend, and shake, and shuffle you, and do all sorts of things. But the Lord God himself will ensure that nothing happens to you, and nothing happens to your bones. I'm tracking on Psalms um, chapter 34, verse 20. The Bible says that the Lord keepeth the bones of the righteous. The Lord keeps the bones of the righteous. Let's break that scripture down a bit. Psalms 34, 20. The Lord keeps the bones of the righteous and none of them is broken. I don't know what your translation reads like, but the God keeps the bones of the righteous and makes sure none of them are broken. The interpretation is that 
the enemy may fold you. The enemy may try to break you. He will keep coming to you. The enemy may try to throw many challenges towards you. The enemy will try to shake you. The enemy will try to rattle you and shuffle you all about and do all sorts of things. Somebody shout about the Lord. But the Lord God himself will ensure that nothing harms you. Somebody tell your neighbor, my bones shall not be broken. My bones shall not be broken. I'm coming out of this thing unscathed and touched. You will come out of every challenge bouncing about. You will come out. Oh, I'm coming out untouched. No scratch. And if I have that scratch, that scratch is just to remind me of the stars that I've collected in this battle. Oh, my bones shall not be broken. I'm coming out bouncing. I'm coming out looking like a marshmallow, hot to the, uh, how did uh, one of my colleagues said, he says, I'm soft to the touch, sweet inside. I'm a marshmallow. I'm meant for the soft life. I'm coming out of this hard life and I'm going to live my soft life. Whatever you're going through, child of God, I'm here to prophesy to you that it will not destroy you. How do I know this? Isaiah 3.10 says, tell the righteous it shall be well with them. That's why I know it. To say to the righteous it shall be well with them. Are we still trekking together? Are you guys tired? We still want to get to the word. Say to the righteous, it is well. It shall be well. It is well. It will be well in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever the enemies are planning against you, just ignore them because it will only work out for your own good, says the Bible in Romans 8.28. For them who are called according to his purpose, the challenge is when you are busy traips, traipsing around and chasing another purpose. I told you the other day, the purpose of the Lord is what? Seek first the kingdom of God. Everything shall be added unto you. When you keep on chasing the other day, chase, chase the kingdom. Everything falls into place. The blueprints come into place. It is well. It is well. Say to the righteous, it is well. It shall be well with them. When the Bible says all things work together for good, it means everything will work out for your good. Not some things, every single thing. Someone may ask you, why am I losing my job? Why am I failing exam? Why am I not finding a partner? Why am I? Da, 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 da. Ah, do you not think that Joseph went through the same questions when he was in prison? He also thought these things when his brothers brought him to slavery. He asked himself these questions. He must have reasoned, how can, it, can, I, can I be put to prison for an offense that I did not commit? But the Bible shows us that that putting into prison worked out for his good. Some people are about to experience a turnaround that will shock even those that were trying to oppress you and put you in the prison. Thank you, Jesus. Everything that has happened... Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. Obey his commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. That's the spirit, says the spirit of the Lord. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. That is how I judge your love. I judge your love. When you love me, keep my commandments, says the spirit of the Lord. If you do everything the Lord expects of you, you are guaranteed that no matter what happens, it will work for you. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. I've just answered somebody on Mara Official. If you love me, keep my commandments. The question that you wanted to ask me when you put it up on the screen is the reason why it ain't working out because you don't love God. Somebody pray this prayer point right now with me and say, Prayer, Lord, let things work together for my good. 
Lord, let things work together for my good. Let things work together for my good. I'm here this morning for those who feel like their blessings have been incarcerated. I'm here for those who are saying they've been surrounded by forces of darkness. I'm here this morning for those who are saying, Pastor Fortune, I need the heavens to blast open for me. I'm here to, 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 to for those who are praying and saying, Pastor Fortune, I need satanic angels to be... Uh, 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 Th th those angels that will come and paralyze every satanic agent in my life that has been contending with my angel of blessing. My blessings have been just attacked time and time again. Who are those people? Is anybody here who I'm talking to? My God. Let things work out for my good. Offer a quality praise to your God. Ask for his mercy, ask for his protection. You will be guaranteed answered prayers, testimonies. Father, I'm here for a testimony. Wash me in your precious blood. Cleanse me of every error that I've committed. Whether I did it intentionally, unintentionally, knowingly, unknowingly. Father, cleanse me. I'm here this morning, oh God, I stand in the gap for those who are listening to the sound of my voice. And I declare that the Lord is our light and our salvation. In whom shall we fear? I'm here to, to stand in the gap, oh God, and pray and Lord. And as I declare that the Lord is our strength, he is the strength of our life. For whom shall we be afraid? We are not afraid of anybody. When the wicked, even our enemies and our en and our foes, come upon to eat our flesh, they will stumble and they will fall in the name of Jesus Christ. Every enemy of your soul, Lord, let them stumble and fall and never to rise again in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for you, PBP. Every enemy that comes charging for you, they will stumble and they will fall. In the name of Jesus Christ, it is written, but the Lord is with, the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you as a mighty, terrible one. Therefore, your persecutors shall stumble. They shall not prevail. I said your persecutors shall stumble. They shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed. They shall not prosper. They shall be greatly ashamed and they shall not prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak everlasting confusion. They shall come they shall be confused. They shall be confounded. My Lord, my Lord and my God, my Lord and my God, let the God of PBP arise in anger and confuse our enemies in Jesus' mighty name. Let the God of PBP arise and turn our enemies into Kadia Basonda. Let them turn against themselves. Let them fight against themselves in the name of Jesus Christ. It is written that we shall associate ourselves with people and you shall be all broken in pieces and give ear all ye far countries get yourself and you shall be broken in pieces get yourself and you shall be broken in pieces take counsel together and it shall come to not speak the word and it shall not stand for God is with us somebody shout in the comment section God is with me God is with me Father, I speak with the power that you have given, with the anointing you have placed on my life, Jesus. I speak against every evil arrangement against our testimonies. Come on, somebody, open up your mouth. Every evil arrangement arranged against my testimony. Let it be broken. I stand on Isaiah chapter 8, verse 9 to 10. I say, let it be broken. Every evil against my life, every evil plot, let it be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. It is written, child of God, in the Bible. It says, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity, and he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Come on, somebody. Revelation 13, 10. Oh, Lord, let the sword of the enemies raised against me be turned back and slaughter them. Did you hear that prayer? I said, oh Lord, somebody shout, oh Lord, oh Lord. let the sword of the enemies raised against me be turned back to slaughter them. They came with their sword, they sharpened them, let it be turned back to slaughter them. They will die in their own guillotines in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, somebody. 
Jesus. The Bible checks with me. And when I check with the Bible, the Bible says he disappoints the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. Job chapter 5. He disappoints the hands of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. My father, as I begin to pray this next prayer point, my father disappoint the enemies of my peace. Who is threatening your peace? My father disappoint the enemies of my peace. Disappoint the enemies of my peace. Are we tracking? Are you praying? Disappoint the enemies of my peace. Oh my God. Thank you, Jesus. I trample under my feet every serpent. I trample under my feet every form of treachery, every form of evil report. I trample under my feet every accusation. I trample up under my feet every form of criticism. In the name of Jesus, no counsel of the wicked shall stand against me. Somebody pray. No counsel of the wicked shall stand against me. No counsel of the wicked shall stand against me. No counsel of the wicked shall stand against me. If God be for me, who can be against me? If God be for me, who can be against me? In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray every tongue that rises against us in judgment shall be condemned. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody open up your mouth and begin to condemn every mouth, every tongue that has risen against you in judgment. Silence them. Do not allow words to linger in the spirit realm of people that have sent evil things about you. Make sure you deal with those words in Jesus' mighty name. Cancel them. Father, I tear down in faith every spiritual wall. Every spiritual wall that is partitioning between me and my divinely appointed helpers. Father God, anything that is a blockade that is blocking me against my divine helpers in the name of Jesus Christ. Anything that is blocking me, that wall that is blocking me against my uh, benefactors in the name of Jesus Christ. I come against it right now. It's teared down. I tear it down in the name of Jesus. I tear it down in the name of Jesus. Check with me. Check with me. Check with me. If you're feeling sleepy, you better stand up and walk around. You better walk around and you fight this thing. We are about, we are just charging in now. Mm. We are about to turn into another top of the hour of, 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 of a new prayer window. Father, as we begin to declare prophetically, my God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare and decree that you are the Lord and you are our God. My Lord, you are my God. My Lord, you are my God. I thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord of hosts and you are the man of war. Understand that this man that you're praying to is not just a man. He's a man of war. He's the Lord of hosts. He's the chief army commander. Amanda, talk to me. You, God, I claim victory over my life. I claim victory over any adversary confronting my life. In Jesus' mighty name, because I know God is with me. I close every single negative door that the enemy might want to open for his special programs that he has planned against you. PBP, anyone under the sound of my voice, I pray for you right now, right now, right now. In Jesus' mighty name, I command every satanic agent, I command them to clear from your path. Your path of victory must be smooth. Every satanic agent, clear up, pack your bags and go. Take your load and go. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you right now, PBP. Let every demonic obstacle that you have, that has been established in the path, uh, in, in your path in Jesus' mighty name, I speak to every demonic obstacle that is standing against your prosperity. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command it to be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ every plan of the enemy let them break let them break let them break ah in jesus mighty name they are totally nullified every plan of the enemy is totally nullified in the name of jesus christ i stand in authority as a servant over this platform ever as a servant on this altar of protocol breaking prayers in the name of jesus christ i break every backbone of the spirit of conspiracy against you every spirit of conspiracy against 
against your prosperity is broken in Jesus' mighty name. I paralyze every single handiwork of the household enemies and envious satanic agents in the name of Jesus Christ. The friends that you thought were friends, but they are envious and they are used by the devil. My God, I break their work in Jesus' mighty name. Rokosika la mahasanderia mahasata lekisata kadia bashondo do 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 boshia rikasoto kodia bashonda any evil feet that have taken root in your life I command them to be removed every tongue that has been speaking against you I command it to be confused in Jesus mighty name I nullify every plan of the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ I nullify every counsel of the enemy I nullify every desire of the enemy I nullify every expectation of the enemy I nullify every imagination in the name of Jesus Christ somebody is being healed right now on your navel you've been having pain this day, today during the day you had a pain on your stomach it hit you like this it was during your lunchtime and you were hit by a pain just around your navel area the Lord is bringing healing to you right now in the name of Jesus Christ my God my father my God in the name of Jesus Christ as I continue to prophetically nullify every activity of the enemy against our lives in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus somebody you have been here what is say brand in English by the way my god sometimes I just cross in languages somebody you have been having an issue of heartburn heartburn you have been having an abnormal heartburn over the past two weeks it has been e escalating in the past two three days the Lord is saying he's bringing healing to you right now in the name of Jesus I command that heartburn to stop in Jesus mighty name it's actually been hindering you even when you are trying to work because it's just Father, I speak and I speak with authority, oh God, with the backing of heaven, with the backing of the blood of Jesus. I terminate every journey of bondage. Any single person who has been feeling like their life is caged, any every any person who has been feeling like they've been in bondage in Jesus' mighty name, any person that has been feeling the effect of unfruitfulness in their life, in the name of Jesus Christ, by design of the enemies, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pull it down. I terminate that journey in Jesus' mighty name. That is not your load. That is not your path. That is not where you packed your bags to. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, I thank you, Jesus. Kanamasho Tokodia. Gwen, thank you so much for confirming that prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Kadabahashata Kadiabahasata. In the name of Jesus, receive your healing, Gwen, in the name of Jesus Christ. Makodabahasata Kadia. Lekisota Kadia Masanda. There is somebody, it is not a sinus that you are having challenges with. There is something that feels like acid on your right side of your nose. You have been feeling an acidic chain. Acidic, it's like it's like acid. Somebody's pushing up acid and it's disrupting you in the name of Jesus Christ I speak healing administrators if you see a testimony please feel free to pin it in Jesus mighty name because I'm not necessarily scratching so shall it be unto you gift in Jesus mighty name Jew is good to see you God bless you I speak to that back pain right now in the name of Jesus Christ I speak healing right now in Jesus mighty name I speak healing right now I speak an alignment who is this let me see Makora can that back pain um prayer come back there's something i'm seeing nerves 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 there's an issue with the nerves that are running down on your back I speak to that nerve pain. You've got sciatica. I don't know whether you've received the diagnosis, but the Lord is showing me a sciatic pain in Jesus' mighty name. Okay, the comment is gone. Father, I rise and I declare and I decree that I bless open every sealed heaven upon our lives in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody lay your hands on your head right now and say, every sealed heaven, open now. Open now. Open now. Every sealed heaven, I command you to open in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I pull down every wall of Jericho preventing our advancement in Jesus' mighty name. This February PBP, you shall advance in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak to every evil hand that has been covering the glory of prosperity over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I command it to receive the thunder of God. Let the thunder of God recover. 
na mashoto kani ya masota. Let it cannibalize, terrorize, obliterate, annihilate any hand that is trying to cover the glory of God over your prosperity in Jesus. Mighty name Jesus. Mighty name Jesus. Mighty name Jesus. Mighty name Jesus. Kona mashokoti ya bahasata kadi ya masonda. Ikalebre seke teke ni ya masota. Hey, I command healing over every sciatic pain in Jesus mighty name. Right now, instant relief. Instant relief in the name of Jesus. Ah, Nati, thank you so much. That abdominal pain in your lower. Yes, the Lord is healing you right now. That person in Mara official confirming that is you. In Jesus mighty name. Let me speak to your progress. Your progress must manifest. Every contender of your progress. Every contender of your progress. Every contender of your advancement. Every contender of your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command them to melt away. I command them to fade away. I command them to melt away. I command them to fade away in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak to every evil error of the enemy that has been fired into your life. I speak to every error of the enemy that has been fired into your business. I speak to every error of the enemy that has been fired into your academics. I speak to every error of the enemy that has been fired into your marriage. I speak to every error of your enemy of the enemy that has been fired against your body. I speak to every error fired against your soul. Every error of the enemy fired against your spirit. Back to sender right now in the name of Jesus. Back fire, back fire, back fire, back fire, back fire, back fire. Let them rise. Konama shokotia la bahasata kadia bahashande lebe sikodia bahashanda. Ikalobro sokod. This one will not be like a hangover. Thank God. I'm even afraid to say it. I send stroke back to sender. Back to sender. Back to sender. Back to sender. I shall not be afraid. I don't have the spirit of fear. I send it back to sender. Father God, that let unleash your, your the worst wrath of God must visit them in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and I declare your restoration is here. You are blessed by the mighty God. Your restoration is here in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive joy. Receive joy. Somebody shout, I receive joy. It's too much, too long, too long. I cannot be in a somber mode, in a a depressed mode. I receive joy in the name of Jesus Christ. I receive total victory in the name of Jesus Christ. I receive total victory in the name of Jesus Christ. I received a fresh fire of God to rise and shine. I received the fresh fire of God to be the light in my life. 2024, light it up. Somebody help me in the in the comment section. Light it up. Let my life light up. Light it 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 up. As I continue to rise and shine light it up oh god in jesus mighty name mm. fresh fire is being released right now fresh fire is released right now no more failure no more failure no more sickness no more sickness no more sorrow in the name of jesus christ i come against the spirit of disappointment i come against the spirit of regret i come against the spirit of shame i decree and i declare that you are free in the name of jesus christ i decree and i declare that you are favored in the name of jesus christ i decree and i declare that you are protected in the name of jesus christ by the mighty hand of the almighty God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God I am free. Thank God I am protected. Thank God that I am favored and nobody can do anything about it. Thank God that my prayers are answered in Jesus' mighty name. This morning, I need people who are saying I'm ready to commit and redo my vows to God. I make a vow unto God for my complete testimony. Somebody make a vow. Somebody make a vow. Somebody receive your complete testimony in the next seven days. Kanama shoko tika daba hasande ika lama soto kodi ama hasanda di besheke tila ba rozoko lo 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 bosha rezikonde de 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 besha Lord show me a token for good. Lord show me a sign for good. Lord show me a te akani ama sonda. Listen child of God. Tables may remain static. Situation in life are not as fixed. Tables, the table that you see me sitting on is not static. It's not 
I can turn it around. I can flip it around. Situations in life cannot be permanent. They can be turned around. Therefore, if tables can be turned around at any point in time, so that means your situation can change at any point in time. It is only God that is unchanging. This is revealed to us in the book of Malachi. For I, the Lord, I am the God, your God. I do not change. Therefore, you, the sons of Jacob, are not consumed. I am the Lord God. Therefore, you sons and daughters of PBP, you cannot be consumed. Talk to me, somebody. Am I communicating this morning? Check with me. I said you cannot be consumed. Is somebody praying that prayer and say, I will not be consumed. God alone is the unchanging changer. My unchanging changer, you come and change my life because I know anything in my life can change, but God remains unchangeable in the name of Jesus. One that does not change, yet he can change any person. One that, that does not change, but yet he can turn situations around for my good. God, step in and turn this thing around for my good in Jesus' mighty name. He's an unchangeable changer. He's a God that is unchanging, but he can come into my life and give me a sign of change. He, at any time, he can change my situation. At any time, he can change the times and seasons that you're trekking on. He can arise and turn the tables around for you. He can arise and turn the tables around for your children. Is somebody praying this for me? As I prophesy this and I'm prophesying as I'm hearing it, the Lord is saying, tell them, Fortune, that I'm turning around the tables. Tables are being turned around. That's how you will be laughing at your enemies and say, how did you do it? When did it happen? You say, tables turned, baby. Tables turned, baby. Come on, somebody snatch your neighbor and tell them tables are turning. Tables are turning. Tables are turning and tables are turning for your children. Why should your children finish school and not have a job? Why should your children finish school and not have money to register? Talk to me, somebody. Jephthah for years had been oppressed by his brothers. They treated him like rubbish. But the day God turned the tables around, the same people that drove him away were the ones that were desperately looking for him. Bible scholars, I'm in the book of Judges chapter 11 verse 14. There was a tenor around for Jephthah. I may be called rubbish. I may have been called useless. I may be called weak. But there is a point of turn around. Turn around and turn around. Turn around. Turn around. I wish I could stand and turn this thing around. My God, we are the ones desperately looking for this turn around. My God. They drove you away. They will call for you in Jesus' mighty name. My God. Turn it around. I know you can find traces of yourself in the Jephthah story. That's why I gave you the scripture so that you go and read it in the book of Judges. You can find the traces of your story and the life. And you look at the life of Jephthah. You say, oh, that looks like me. Oh, Lord, have mercy and forgive me all my sins that I've committed. Oh, God, I don't want to be stuck. I need a turn around. Anything that has been working against me, my God, turn it around in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh my God, I pray for PBP. Anyone under the sound of my voice right now in Jesus' mighty name, everything that must change in my life, let it change. Anything that must change in my life, let it change. Let my story turn around for good. Let me turn around for the better in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody is being healed of rheumatoid arthritis in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, arise and turn all my captivities around. When the Lord showed that the captivity of Zion was turned around and we were like them that dreamed. We were like somebody's about to love this morning in Jesus mighty name. Father as I continue to pray I'm not tired. Are you tired? I'm not tired if you are not tired. If you are not tired I will keep on bringing it as the Lord says I must say it. Oh Lord I rebuke every single power of that is contending my God with the change. Any change that needs to happen in your life. God my God every power contending against that change. Let it fall down and die in Jesus' mighty name. Any power contending with your change of story, it is obliterated in the name of Jesus Christ. Anything and anywhere that has set your destiny behind, backward, somehow telling you that your destiny is over, the time is out, there's no time out. I have not expired. Somebody needs to announce to the devil, devil, I have not expired. Don't tell me that I won't amount to anything. Don't tell me that I will not be married. If it is in your destiny to be married, so shall it be. If you God is not is saying you are the one. No, except in Jesus' mighty name. Ah, Kadia Basata. 
Loose me and let me go. Devil, loose me and let me go. I don't know. I need to pause and, and speak to those who are overthinking. If you are a man and you're on this broadcast, stop overthinking what you need to do. There is a blessing that comes from you getting married. Stop dilly darling. Propose and get it done. Get up from your laurels. Get the job. Do whatever you need to do. Get the income you need to get the family you need. There is a blessing that comes. That, that's why the Bible says whoever finds a wife finds a good thing. You need a helper. Your life is stuck because... I don't know who I'm talking to, but you are hearing me very well. Your life is stuck and is about to turn around when you commit... Gone are the days when we will be in churches, when there's so many women in churches and less brothers in churches and people who are, oh, Jesus, help me. Let me not go there. Brothers are in churches and they end up, we don't know whether they are double adapters, single adapters, triple adapters. We don't know and we don't understand. Gone are the days when the, 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 the maidens are being deflowered in church and you're making a mockery. We've got churches that are full of single parents. Functionality must come back to the body of Christ. Stability must come back to the body of Christ. Let's get things right and get things in order. Not going to be having prayer points of marriage as if like that's the only. There's so many prayer points that we need to be praying for. We need to be world changers. Can't be stuck on one thing. One one brother dating seventeen girls in church. No 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 no. You think you are the you are the apple of God's eye because of what you are the apple of the whole church. One one person in the worship team dating the whole the whole worship team ladies. Making the people fight amongst each other. I don't know why I had to stop for that rebuke, but let me rebuke it. Let's just, let's understand. What are we teaching in Sunday school with all this single parenting? In Jesus' mighty name. User 28120, let that child receive healing right now in Jesus' mighty name. Make sure that she's in the atmosphere right now in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you. Any power contending with the change that I need to have. Some of the things that we are correcting now, it's so that the rest of the year, we are now in February. You don't have time to be praying these things again in June. You don't have time to be praying these things again in June. Sorry, the mother in me will always come out. So the nurturing side of me will always come out. By the leading of the Holy Spirit. Let's correct certain things in church. So that our prayers are unhindered. Hallelujah. This rivalry. Rivalry in the homes. Couples fighting. And you wonder why your prayers are, are hindered. No, 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 no. Precious, it is settled in Jesus' mighty name. Stop focusing on them and just praise God. And just thank him. And they will go. No panic. Panic is the way the devil... You will cause stress if you continue to panic. And if you cause stress and you continue to panic, what is going to happen is, is the opposite of what you want to happen. You will attract your worst fear. So the Lord is telling me to tell you, Precious, stop focusing on that thing it will make you panic and you will attract that which you fear it will come to pass and i don't want you to go there so i pray for you i stand with you and i ask god to give you the strength oh jesus my god father we thank you for this turnaround anywhere or anything that has set our destiny behind schedule Anything that has put us behind and backward in Jesus' mighty name. May it lose its power from us in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I pray that your divine power will give us a divine turnaround that will rewrite the story of our lives in Jesus' mighty name. Let it rewrite the story of our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you are the man of war. We understand we are here at this midnight hour for battle. 
Men of war, anyone who's trying to make themselves a lion, bringing out their teeth, destroy their teeth of God. They cannot, their roar is nothing. Their bite is nothing. I pray for you, PBP, that the Lord will break you and mold you for his glory. Whatever he needs to take out from you, he will take out. Whatever he needs to restore, he will restore. I pray to the Lord God of Elijah to arise in his power and let all your enemies fall before you in Jesus' mighty name. You will see your enemies fall in Jesus' mighty name. When, whenever there is an enemy plan to attack you, to attack your future, I pray that their counsel shall be turned into foolishness. Somebody open up that their mouth. Pray that wherever they are gathered, wherever they are, they, are, they will just fall apart. They are canceled. Their plans shall turn into foolishness in the name of Jesus Christ. My God, I thank you. Our expectations shall not be cut off in the name of Jesus Christ. The enemies over our lives shall be disappointed. Father, we rose to battle in the spirit. We say, are the enemies of our lives shall be disappointed. They shall be disappointed. Let disappointment be the order of the day concerning your enemies in Jesus' name. Whatever evil decisions they take against you, truth shall deliver you. If you feel they've gossiped about you, they say they have evidence. The truth shall deliver you. Don't panic. I don't know what they have against me. They are forcing me to resign. I'm talking to somebody now. What are you resigning for? Are you not a child of God? Stand on your truth. Stand on your truth. The truth shall deliver you. God bless those who are subscribing. The truth shall deliver you. Let them be disappointed. I pray for you today that you will encounter the God who can turn tables around for you. I pray that you will encounter the God that will make your rejection turn around for a celebration. You were rejected to be celebrated. You shall be celebrated. Somebody just appropriate to yourself. I shall be celebrated in the name of Jesus Christ. This year, this February, this year is even too long. Sometimes we must just do. I need quick, quick, quick fixes, quick miracles. Yeah. Father, in this February, I shall be celebrated in Jesus' mighty name. Those who have been despised, I prophesy you shall be honored in Jesus' name. I shall be honored. Thank you, Lord, that I shall be honored. I shall be honored in the name of Jesus. I shall be honored in the name of Jesus. I shall be honored in the name of Jesus. See, your life shall be ordered when you, when you bring the order of God in your life. Do the work, stick to the program, stick to the prayers, do what is needed. Hallelujah. You will be celebrated. The order you are requesting, the answer is, there shall be order. If you bring the order of God in your life, it shall be ordered, my baby. Okay? It shall be ordered and you shall be honored. As he begins to order your step, truly submitted, truly submitting yourself to what he wants you to do. Truly submitting yourself. Don't leave any room. Don't, don't, don't compromise. It shall be ordered. I prophesy your life shall be ordered as God is ordering you in Jesus' mighty name. Those who have felt undervalued, I prophesy from today, you shall be highly respected and you shall be highly appreciated in the name of Jesus Christ. Those that have been despised today, a turnaround of honor and appreciation and respect is released for you in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, shakadaba asata kadiaba. Oh, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't know why these gadgets are telling me their f- batteries are flat, but the devil is a liar. This message shall go through in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Show me a sign for good. Can somebody help me tag that in the comment section? Father, show me a sign for good. We shouldn't always be asking for a sign for good, but there are times when we need a sign for good because some people have been hurt. Some people are desperate. And Lord, I pray this morning that show them a sign for good. God, tend to them. Have mercy on them. Give them your strength in the name of Jesus. Show them a sign for good that those that hate us shall see and be ashamed. God, show me a sign for good. Those that have chosen to be my haters, let them be ashamed. Those that have chosen to be my haters, let them see me and and be ashamed. They will see a turnaround in your life. In Jesus' mighty name. For you, God, you, Lord, are good. You are a good God. You are a merciful God. Thank you, Lord, for preservation of life. Thank you, Lord, because you are holy. You are God and you save those that trust you. And, Lord, we declare this morning that we trust you. We trust you. And Lord, we thank you for giving ear to our prayers in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, Lord, that you are attending to the voice of our supplications in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that there is no trouble that we will call upon you to step into that you will not answer and eradicate in Jesus' mighty name. Amongst all other gods, there is no God like you, my God. There is no God. You are the only God that we can run to in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Lord! Have your way in our lives in Jesus' mighty name. Mighty are your works, O God, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says you shall remember the Lord your God because it is him that gives you power. If you humble yourself, humble yourself. Go down on your knees. He will remember your prayers and he will hear your prayers. He will come speedily. While you are yet still speaking, he will come and rescue you in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And as we begin to close, I don't know whether we're closing, if there's anything. We're at the top of the hour. We're just about to close. Okay, I see time is fast spent. The Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18 but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of the lord even as by the spirit of the lord father change me into that which you want to see in my life change me into the image that reflects you O god in jesus name For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord God will give grace and God will give glory. And no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Father, we decree and we declare that we shall walk uprightly and no good thing shall be withheld from us. No good thing shall be withheld from us. Is somebody praying? No good thing shall be withheld from me. In this month of February, there is no good thing that will be withheld from me in Jesus' mighty name. There is no good thing that shall be withheld from me in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you and we continue to pray for a supernatural turn around as we close in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for the grace and the privilege to call upon you and to call upon your glorious name as we continue to seek your, your forgiveness, oh God. As, as we continue to seek your face, oh God, as we continue to seek that you cleanse us from all unrighteousness, oh God, let your hand be stretched out forth in, uh, in favor for us, oh God. Stretch forth your hand of favor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Stretch forth your hand of favor and change our story. Can somebody please shout unto God and ask him to change your story. Change my story, oh God. This February. Let it be a February of favor. Change my story so that my light shall so shine. Let it be a February of favor in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for PBP as I close. 
I thank you, Lord, that every wicked enemy that was ordained to put shame and stop us from fulfilling destiny, that it shall be destroyed by the fire of God in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I pray, Lord, that every situation that was designed by the wicked enemies to make us suffer, to make us labor in vain, it shall be corrected in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, I pray, Lord, that everything that you did not plant in our bodies, every evil deposit shall be uprooted and taken out in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we will continue to experience continuous progress against the devil's plans and devices. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that every Satan satanic cage that they have placed out there God trying to hold down our glory trying to hold down our stars in the name of Jesus Christ I command that it shall be broken by fire it shall be broken by fire it shall be broken by fire in the name of Jesus Christ Father I pray for every single person under the sound of my voice that the spirit of death that has been appointed to kill them or their family members my God before their glory is even manifested Father God let that spirit of death be bound let that spirit of death be cast out in the name of jesus christ let the spirit of death be bound i pray oh god this year 2024 shall be a different year we shall not bury any of our loved ones we shall not bury ourselves even in jesus mighty name I come against that spirit of death. I bind it. I cast it out in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for every single member of PBP and every single person that has followed us today, my God, every single person that is associated, every minister and every woman, uh, uh, fe female or male minister of the gospel that is our partners, oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, connect them to destiny. Help us in Jesus' mighty name. Help us that will help them progress from glory to glory. I I pray, oh God, every single person under the sound of my voice, there is going to be a divine connection with their destiny. Help us in this month of February in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and I declare that over your life, that your life is blessed with grace and glory. I pray that your life is blessed with the extraordinary successes that God has ordained and petitioned for you in Jesus' mighty name. I decree and I declare that there shall be an open heaven over your life in Jesus' mighty name, that you will continue experience productive progress in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that prosperity shall be progressive and continuous in your life in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for you on TikTok and on YouTube and on Facebook that, that you shall experience an upgrade of your life in the name of Jesus Christ from one level of glory to another level of glory. Somebody shout it with me and say, I'm going from one level of glory to another level of glory. I'm shifting from one level of glory to another level of glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, God, break and destroy every witchcraft altar in the name of Jesus Christ. Every witchcraft altar that has been erected, oh God, every witchcraft shrine erected against me, against my destiny, against the shining of my star and glory, against the, 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 the illumination of my light this year in Jesus' mighty name. My God, anything that is trying to turn my glory into shame, my God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I order a breaking, I order a destruction right now and and I stand in agreement with that person who will say amen, that it shall be broken, it shall be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you, oh God, that glory destroyers and those who are assigned to terminate our lives, oh God, they will receive confusion in their lives in Jesus' mighty name. They will destroy themselves in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you are putting an end to every power of failure. You are putting an end to every power of disappointment in the name of Jesus Christ. You are putting an end to any power that is operating against our destinies in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you tracking with me? I have believing saints, I hope, that will shout a believing amen. That will make sure that their amen is thundering well in Jesus' mighty name. As we put an end to every power of failure. As we put an end to every power of disappointment. As we put an, an end to everything that is operating against your star shining in the name of Jesus Christ. We completely send destruction 
destruction, destruction by the fire of the living God. You, God, are a consuming fire. Let the consuming fire hit every single camp of destruction that is trying to destroy our lives in Jesus' mighty name. Father, stretch forth your hand and encircle us with your glory. Stretch forth your hand and circle us with your favor. And stretch forth your hand, oh God. Give us breakthroughs that cannot be denied. Give us breakthroughs and let our life begin to experience your blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. In this month of February, God will open doors for you. God will open doors for your blessings in Jesus' mighty name. And the saints of God said, Amen. Somebody open up your mouth as you give God the praise as you thank God in Jesus' mighty name right now. Thank him for every answered prayer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If you know that the Lord has blessed you, if you know that the Lord has given you a token for good, if you know that the Lord has turned everything around to work for your good, this is your time to open up your mouth to thank the God who is a specialist in bringing out the good out of bed. Out of every evil circumstance, God is able to turn it around for your good. If you know that the Lord has given you that this morning, in this evening prayers, in this midnight prayers, I want you to open up your mouth and thank the Lord right now in the name of Jesus Christ. You serve a God who specializes in bringing out the good out of the evil, the best out of the better. My God in Jesus' mighty name, you are operating in the best anointing in Jesus' mighty name. You are moving from a point where it was meaningless to a point where it was meaningful. Somebody is declaring right now and praying and thanking God and saying my life shall have meaning. I am meaningful. I am purposeful in Jesus mighty name. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is a synergy that is happening right now. A synergy of energy in the situations over your life that will produce the best destiny has to produce in your life right now. In Jesus mighty name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Christ, you are coming out, your talents are coming out, your skills are coming out, your giftings are manifesting in the name of Jesus Christ. Joseph was called a dreamer and he was envied because of his dreams. Whatever the Lord has deposited inside of you, it will come out, you will be envied for the gifts and the talents and that you are going to be manifesting in Jesus' mighty name. Whatever has threatened to disconnect you from being being that thing that God has called you to be right now. I come against that thing in Jesus' mighty name. The elevation that you need, the promotion that you need, in the same way that Joseph was promoted and became the prime minister in Egypt. My God, may you receive the promotion that will shock people, that will make jaws drop in Jesus' mighty name. May you receive that promotion in Jesus' mighty name. May you receive that promotion in Jesus' mighty name. I pray, my God, for every business that needs to be located. May God make your business stand out amongst other businesses in Jesus' mighty name. God, who is a specialist of turning things around for your good, is showing up for you this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Those things that have been nonsensical and not making sense, God is about to make them make sense in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for you in Jesus' mighty name. The Bible, when I try with it, it tells me that Obed Edom the Gittite, the ark of God, was brought to his house, was meant to kill him, but instead it made him to blossom, instead it made him to live, instead it made him to flourish until Kadia Basonda, until he became the envy of his generation. May the Lord position you in places and things that will bring you out to become an envy to your generation. May God position you into places where you will be the spotlight and you will shine. May God position position you in places where they have no option but to call you yes boss. They will position you into a position that they have no option to call you and say yes my manager. Yes they will bow down. The crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ. The devils had gathered to ensure that they nail him to the cross. They gathered to make sure that he dies in the name of Jesus Christ. They gathered to make sure that he was buried in Jesus mighty name but 
that suddenly something began to happen. I prophesy that there is a suddenly that is about to step into your life. There is a suddenly that is about things to change things in your life. Something is about to happen. The most colossal damage of the devil came about when Jesus resurrected from the dead. He conquered death. He conquered hell. He conquered everything concerning devil. He made a colossal spectacle of the devil. May God cause a colossal damage to the devils that have been fighting you. May God cause a colossal damage to happen to the things that you have been experiencing that have been threatening to kill you in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus resurrected and I prophesy, child of God, you are resurrecting. You will not die in the situation that you thought was going to kill you. You are resurrecting by the same token when you got born again, you died with Christ and you rose with Christ. Therefore, in your resurrection, everything that was dying in your life, I prophesy your business is resurrecting. I prophesy the career that you thought was dying is resurrecting. The career you thought they will take away from you is resurrecting in Jesus' mighty name. The job that you have been out of for so many years is resurrecting in Jesus' mighty name. The child that you thought was stubborn and the child is coming together. In Jesus' mighty name, if they are resurrecting in Jesus' mighty name, I pray for every single child being played by autism. I command that spirit of autism to come out in Jesus' mighty name. My God, there was a fulfillment of prophecy when God resurrected. Jesus crushed the head of the devil. Jesus crushed the head of the devil. I prophesy everybody singing, sitting under the sound of my voice uh, as you sitting wherever you are, as you are standing, you are sitting on the head of the devil. You are crushing the head of the devil as you step out and you step into wherever you are stepping. Just be cognizant of the fact that you are crushing the head of the devil. You are fulfilling prophecy in Jesus' mighty name. I prophesy that you are receiving your authority back in Jesus' mighty name. Your favor is coming back fully in Jesus' mighty name. Job entered into the furnace of affliction and he came out far better than what he went in. In Jesus' mighty name, the devil was put to shame. Whatever they thought was going to bring you down, they thought there was no comeback. I want you to tag your neighbor and say, I'm the comeback kid. I am coming back and I'm coming back be out better than way the way I came. That which they meant for shame, the pain that they thought would kill me, it ain't going to kill me. I'm coming out in Jesus' mighty name. Daniel entered into the lion's den. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego entered into the fire and there was no loss. I need somebody to prophesy into their lives and say there shall be no loss. There shall be no loss. I may be in the fire. There shall be no loss. They might be threatening to repossess my possessions. I, there shall be no loss. I might look like my bank account is on empty. There shall be no loss. We shall eat and we shall eat the good of the land. There shall be no loss. There shall be no loss. No lion shall consume me. No lion shall consume my children. Those of my family members that are in hospital, they are coming out. There shall be no loss. In the name of Jesus, it is working together for my good. It is working together for my good. I expect the goodness of the Lord. I expect the goodness of the Lord. I am spiritually tough. I am spiritually resilient. Somebody prophesied Prophesy. This thing is not for the faint hearted. This thing is for those who are spiritually tough. I'm spiritually tough. This thing is for those who are spiritually resilient. I am resilient. I am unshakable in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm coming out in absolute. I am ruggedized. Whatever is threatening to ruggedize you, ruggedize it back in Jesus' mighty name. Whatever happened that was supposed to rag ruggedize you, kill you. My God, you are coming out even more radicalized against the devil. You will ruggedize the devil in Jesus' mighty name. I know you are still looking for the English definition. It's not there. It's not in the book. But you become ragged. If the devil comes to you with ruggedness, you become ragged. You give him back what he comes with. If somebody comes with to you with boxing hands held up, you better make sure that your hands are held up in Jesus' mighty name. I prophesy the shall be a radicalization that is happening right now in your spirit man in Jesus mighty name where people are called are going down you are radicalized you are going up in Jesus mighty name your love for Jesus will make you more radical in the name of Jesus Christ the knowledge of the other side of God will radicalize you 
There was a side of God that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego saw. And may you see that side. There was a side of God that they knew and they entered the fire with the confidence. Anywhere you find yourself, dust yourself and remind yourself of who you are and whose you are and who you belong to. And you are becoming radicalized and say, hey, I see the fourth man in the fire. I see the fourth man in the fire. At the edge of the fire. He appears in the midst of the fire. I don't know what you're stressing about. Daniel knew a side of God that he never would have known before until he entered into the lion's den. Some of you should be not so scared to be entering into situations and you think that you are going to just melt away. You are not that marshmallow-ish. You are a marshmallow in the appearance of others, of the enemies. But the enemy must know that when he comes to you and tries to melt you, you know the other side of God. You can only know the other side of God when you are in the fire. My God, Job knew the side of God that he, nobody else knew. He got to the point where he knew the side of God in the midst of affliction, that there is a God that turns things around and restores more than a hundredfold. And I prophesy to you, child of God, that you will not let the season pass just like that. You will make this your prayer. Lord, show me the side of you that I've never known before in this season. Somebody pray that with me as I close. Lord, show me the side of you that I've never seen before. Somebody is being healed of cardiac pains. You've got an inflammation on your lungs right now. The Lord is healing you. Don't let the season pass until I see another side of God. God, don't let me go through this season without seeing the other side of you. There's another side of you that is good. There's another side of you that is a conqueror. That is another side of you that is going to make me more than a conqueror. That is telling me that I'm victorious. There's another side of you that gives me the trophy. There's another side of you that shows me that my children are going to make it. There's another side of you that shows me that I will not go to bed hungry in the name of Jesus Christ. There's another side. God is giving me the opportunity to reflect. I know, I know, I know, I know. Lord, give us that opportunity to reflect and see the other side of you. Give us the opportunity to reflect and, and the opportunity to be strengthened, oh God, in your might, in Jesus' mighty name, in what really matters in our lives. Give us that opportunity for our families to see the other side of you in Jesus' mighty name. Give us that opportunity in Jesus' mighty name. My God. Father, we receive in our homes that climate of peace. Let peace reign in our homes. In this February, I pray for you that there shall be a recovery of your goals, that your goals must be reset. Whatever reset you need, let it come to pass. It's a time for reset. There's a place, there's things that you desire God to increase you in grace. And God is saying, I'm resetting that. I pray for you that in this February, not only shall you dream, but you will receive revelation. Not only shall you receive revelation, but you will receive interpretation. Not only shall you see, receive interpretation, but you will move into implementation. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you. I glorify you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we appreciate your faithfulness. We thank you for these ones that have gathered this morning. We thank you for your mercy and we thank you for your kindness. We thank you for giving us that tough skin and toughening us even inside of God that we are able to stand. Lord, all the spiritual demands that we have made in your name, oh God, that we're going to have answers. We receive the grace to strengthen us and to reflect on what matters in our life, oh God, that we don't miss it in this year in Jesus' name. It's turning around for our good. It's turning around for our good in Jesus' name. It's turning around in, our, in Jesus' mighty name. I declare that you will receive immediate answers and solutions to any issue that you are facing. 
I prophesy that you receive fresh oil. I prophesy that you will receive fresh grace. And you will receive dominion. You will receive your garments of royalty in this month of February. As they're being poured out from the heavens right now. Receive your garments of royalty and walk in your royalty in Jesus' mighty name. I prophesy that there shall be no loss in your life. There shall be no loss. Continue to shine and walk in the light of God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God bless you, those of you who are on YouTube. Thank you so much. Dr. Larry, I see you there. And I see who else is there in Pume. Everybody who's been commenting, thank you so much for keeping YouTube alive and on fire. Thank you so much for those who are on Facebook as well for keeping it alive and on fire. Keep going and re-watching and doing the comments. Do not forget to press the like button. Do not forget to subscribe. And even if we are not live, just share the link to the YouTube and say, follow this channel. You will be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Those of you on TikTok, please help me hit the follow button. It would be so good to be part of you and part of me we want you to be part of this prayer warrior family we are connected for jesus and for jesus alone hallelujah we are connected with the word and we are a protocol breaking prayer altar here spreading the word of god on social media on all channels i even forgot to press twitter today oh my god please help me follow follow me on twitter fortune l online so that we can also broadcast on video but i believe yesterday we tested it for the first time we were on audio on twitter let's spread jesus on twitter as well so fortune l online fortune my name and then this the name l online there is a link in my bio for my youtube channel the same word name that i use on youtube channel everywhere on the social media please follow me let's help spread the gospel i know that different people do use different platforms some people say tiktok is too fast for me but please share the gospel with me please help me spread this thing help me win a billion souls for jesus and let's do it together hallelujah thank you so much every man and woman of god thank you so much for honoring this meeting prophetess dear davis it's so long i i saw you i i i haven't been around on 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 the on the broadcast but i have been there in the background but i really love you my sister thank you for the love and any man of god and woman of god that i've not acknowledged god bless you thank you so much it's an honor it's an honor god bless you my darlings on youtube jump over to tiktok you know how we do it hallelujah let's say our last goodbyes god bless you i love you so much thank you so much guys i hope you